so this is the second part of my art supply video. The first part included all of my supplies in terms of coloring, drawing, inking, etc. And this one will be touching upon all the papers that I use, as well as like a little mini brief review of each and what I recommend. So to start, everyone asked me about my colored, colored pencil paper that I prefer to use. And honestly, I just use regular copy paper, but I would honestly recommend for most colored pencils that you at least choose something with a little more tooth. And what I mean by more tooth... I'm talking about maybe like drawing paper or sketch paper. Honestly though, all of the drawing and sketch paper that I've used have not been good with um, colored pencil, but something kind of like the Strathmore drawing paper. I don't really prefer this one for colored pencil to be honest, but if you can find something that has that feels rough and it doesn't feel smooth, then I would recommend using whatever that is. You have to kind of work with it and f test out and find what you like the best. So I also bought some Bristol vellum surface. Bristol. I also have the smooth one, but I'm not even going to bother showing that one because my rabbit chewed off the cover so it would look like any other type of paper. But this one isn't as smooth as the regular smooth Bristol, but I think it's pretty good for colored pencil. So you could try this, see if this works for you, or you can just stick with printer paper like I do. But it also doesn't, the printer paper doesn't hold a lot of layers, so keep that in mind. So next, I will be talking about watercolor. And... Even though a lot of people don't like this for watercolor, I absolutely love this for watercolor. This is the Canson or Canson, whatever you want to call it, mixed media paper, and this is in the size 7x10. It's the perfect size for me, and it's kind of like my sketchbook in a way. So people claim that this paper is probably not good with watercolor at all, but I love it for watercoloring. And I will show you an example. Um, I actually just recorded my sketchbook drawing update for 2014, so you'll probably see this in the other video as well. This is a good example where even though the paper kind of warps a little bit, if you place this under like a textbook or something, it'll straighten it out. So I just like this because it allows me to get layers like this where it's it's, there's a stark difference between the base and the shading, and I prefer that for my style. I like cell shading for watercolor, and some of the other papers leave a more soft effect, so there's not a lot of contrast there, and I want contrast, so I like this paper, but if you plan to use a lot of water, then you might want to stick with another paper because this is only 90 pounds. Um, no, 98 pounds, but that's still rather low. Another paper that I love for watercolor is the Strathmore Mixed Media Paper. This is 140 pounds, so it's recommended that you use at least 140 pounds whenever you plan to watercolor. And this is a vellum surface, so you honestly could use the Bristol vellum, but I don't know why, but I personally love this one. And I, this is what I use to make my bookmarks. So next, in terms of watercolor, I have a lot of watercolor paper. Um, I recently got this. I don't know if it's going to fit in here, probably not, but this is the Hanson Montval paper. Um, I'm not sure what I think of this paper yet, but you can honestly go out and buy this and try it out yourself, see if you like it any better, because right now, I'm a little not sure of what I think about this paper. This is the, what, 300 grams, or 300 GSM, 140 pound paper. This is cold press. I'm pretty sure that's the only one they buy, they sell, and yeah, it's just regular watercolor paper. Some other papers that I recently tried. This is the 
another cans on paper. Um, this is just the extra large watercolor paper. Nothing special here. Uh, I, I like this paper. I'm. I test a lot of watercolor paper, but I usually reserve judgment because most of them pretty much do the same thing. The only thing I'm looking for for my particular style is that they don't they don't start to rip and tear and have like the little um, not threads but material of the paper coming off of the surface. So this one, if you drench it in water and you keep like scraping, it's gonna scrape the surface of the paper off. But it's a still it's still a good paper for my purposes at least. Um, then I have this, which honestly this is this is what I call a shit paper. Not that it's completely crap to say the least, but um, I don't really I use this for I don't know just for fooling around because. For my purposes, the surface of the paper, it starts to, it does exactly what I don't want it to do, what I just described before, where if you scrape at it while the paper is wet, most of, um, not kernels, I don't know exactly how to describe it, but pieces of the paper just start to come off and it leaves a really not smooth look and it looks like you have like little pieces of residue on your painting and I don't like that. And plus, for some reason, I don't get the depth that I want on this either so there's not enough contrast for me so this is a paper that you could try if you want but personally I don't exactly like it but I can work with it if I really wanted to because normally you could just wait for the paint to dry and then go over it again and it won't do the scraping thing but this this scrapes no matter what I don't know why and it's just not my favorite might be someone else's favorite for whatever their technique is So I think that's it in terms of watercolor. So I'm going to go over to marker now. So I used to use the Canson, Canson uh, marker layout paper, but now I don't anymore. Now I like to use, um, let me see, I can't get it for you right now, but it is the um, Hammer Mill color copy cover digital cover something like that it's the 90 pound but it also comes at 110 pounds something like that and it's really smooth paper and i really really enjoy it let me try and find some uh i have a huge um i have it in bulk and I'm trying to find some to show you guys, but I can't I can't find any right now, but it's rather thick and I don't think it absorbs that much ink, so it's really nice for blending. And yeah, actually no, I know where I can find some. Okay, so this is an, this is an example of some of the hammer mill paper. And it's rather it's thicker than copy paper, but it's light enough that it doesn't suck all the ink out of your marker. It's rather smooth, very very smooth, and it's bright white. And this is just this little drawing that I made. Just a little doodle. But this is an example of its blending abilities. Um, how it allows the markers to blend and how crisp the lines are, strokes are, ink lines, whatever. And it doesn't soak that much ink. It, it soaks up enough the appropriate amount and I'm sorry for the lighting it's a bit dark now for whatever reason so this is the marker paper that I really like then I started to try out this this is the Borden and Riley Paris bleed proof paper and let me turn on the light so this is the Borden Riley Paris Bleed Proof Paper. And sorry if I keep freezing up and not finishing my sentences. I keep hearing weird, weird things. So I've been looking around inspecting. But anyways, this is 108 pound and it's really, it's nice and thick. Doesn't bleed through and it's really smooth. I really like this paper and I would recommend it, definitely. For marker users, but it's a little expensive depending where you buy it. 
I have a lot of marker paper, so I'll just try and go through it fast. So here I have some Express It blending card. Everyone knows that. Super smooth paper from Australia. Very expensive, and it has to be imported to the U.S., so you can try this, but it's more expensive. And then I have some Gina K. Pure Luxury paper. I have Ram Pure White, and it's a lot like the, the Borden and Riley and the Copic Express It, except the difference is that it's, I don't know, it has some sort of coating on it. I don't know if you can see it. Probably not. When it glistens in the light, you, normally you can see it with the sheen it gives off. You can sort of see it, not really, but there's a coating on here, so the ink practically just sits on top of the paper. And you can get this at the Gina K website. Um, I think it's $5 for a pack of 25 And then here is the ivory one, and if I recall correctly, uh, Miss Carrie J uses this paper, the ivory one. It's not my favorite, but it's nice for coloring. Both are really nice for coloring, but you shouldn't blend too much on the pure luxury, pure white one. The ivory is more absorbent while the pure white has that coating, so it's going to sit on top and you might be able, you might have to, I don't know, you might accidentally smudge the ink while you're coloring. So I went through all of those and I think that might actually be it. I don't recall that I have any more other than that. Um, for sketchbooks, I, I actually prefer to k draw without a sketchbook. I like to have my sheets separate, but if you want a sketchbook, you can just grab whatever sketchbook. Honestly, for me, I really don't care what sketchbook I use. I use whatever is available. Um, if there's a sketchbook at Walmart, I'll use that. If there's a sketchbook at Michael's on sale, I'll use that. I really don't care. I do prefer a smoother paper for sketchbooks, but it doesn't really matter to me that much. So, I think that's all of the papers that I own. Or, I'm probably forgetting some because I feel like I am. But, those are all of the papers that I own, and I hope that somewhat helped you pick whatever paper you want to use for whatever medium. And have a nice day. Bye.